Demarcus Cousins. You know, those are guys who are taking a shot on. Um, all all big names to be sure. Um, and well, you know, when you already got Melo, they're interested in the supporting cast. Uh, yeah, you think those guys would would uh, desire to play uh, second fiddle to Mello? Yeah, they'll let Mello ride shotgun. Okay, and looking forward to the draft. Who might you be targeting down the road? Uh, I don't mess around with college basketball. You know, the real game's the NBA. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, they both have their uh, their pros and cons, but I the wouldn't say that. Is better, the hustle's there. You know, these guys are trying to earn money. They're not just playing for Wait. college. Okay, wait, hold on a second. All right, uh, uh, Andre, uh, hold on one second. Um, I'm getting some information from my producer, Rola Diano, in my headphones here. What? You're sure? You're positive? Um, Andre, uh, my producer just got off the phone with the New York Knicks front office, and they say they've never heard of you. I'm, I'm not the, uh, the GM of the New York Knicks. Uh, I'm the GM of the Long Island Knicks. You know, it's, it's basically the same thing. It's, uh, it's my nephew's basketball team. He's, he's six. Ah, okay. All right. Well, uh, well, good on you for uh, being involved in uh, youth athletics. Uh, something to be said for that. Um, uh, does your team employ a fifth quarter so all the kids get to play? Uh, he, he probably needs to be. My nephew's terrible. He's a, he's a little chubby kid. Uh, tell me, do they employ a three-point line at that age? Yeah, you know, no, nobody shoots from there. Though. My my nephew reminds me of a guy Bobby. You know, they call him the round man to rebound. Except uh, my nephew can't rebound. So he's just the round mound of uh, nothing. Yeah, that real mobile. They try to put him at center, but he can't jump. And tell me this: uh, what type of offense does your team employ? You know, uh, scoring. Okay. Uh, what about the old pick and then roll around on the floor? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> well, you know, they, they just go out and, you know, they score. Alrighty then. You know, it's just like the NBA. You go out, you try to score, you know, that's your offense. All right. Well, Andre Leibowitz, GM of the uh, Long Island Knicks of the uh, Youth League. Thanks for giving the call a show. Uh, by the way, man, uh, one of our frequent contributors and guests on the show is DJ Jimmy Jim Jim, a very famous uh, nightclub DJ. Have you had a chance to hear him spin any music up in your neck of the woods? No, you see, he's from Staten Island. I'm from Long Island. That's just not how we roll. You don't cross islands. Oh, okay. I did not know that about islands. I, I grew up in the hood. Uh, my neighbor was so poor, he had to buy a used BMW. Boom! Okay, Andre Leibowitz, everybody. All right, man, thanks for giving the show a call. And uh, hopefully we, well, never mind. Thanks for the call. And now it's time for the First of Monday.com Champion of the Week. This week's champion comes to us from a new story out of the UPI. If you want to read a little bit more about this dude, Sharon Lamar Rogers, throwing up gang signs for Jesus. Mm Mm-hmm. Dude was on an airplane, as Hunter Thompson liked to say. Buy your ticket and take the ride. Hunter would be proud of this dude. Apparently, he uh, had smoked some purple hash before he got on the plane. And once on the plane, uh, even before liftoff, he started demanding some wine. My man was high on hash and wanted some red wine. Uh, When he was refused service, he started flashing gang signs at passengers and talking about Jesus. Uh, In fact, uh, as soon as he boarded, he demanded to to sit in first class. He said he had a first class ticket. Uh, Turns out uh, this flight had no first class seats to begin with. Um, the attendants asked Rogers to stow his luggage several times. He said, I do what I want. And, uh, so then he, he sits down before the flight even takes off and hits the emergency button. They come over. Oh, what's the emergency, sir? I, I need a drink. That was the emergency. Um, he, he, he asked for three glasses of wine and, uh, was denied. Uh, he finally had to say, uh, get the fuck out of my face. Jesus loves you. Uh, I, I not sure which proverb that is uh and began began throwing up uh, gang signs and rambling incessantly about uh jesus christ and uh he was met at the airport uh in portland oregon 
And he did admit to authorities he had been smoking some of that purple hash. Uh, so this dude, I mean, that's how you fly, man. That's how you got to fly. Um, air travel sucks, uh, you know, whether it's a 50 minute commuter flight or, you know, a eight hour flight to, you know, across the pond, it, it sucks. So, you know, uh, hats off to this dude for, for getting, uh, you know, in the mood, so to speak, getting high to fly on some purple hash. Uh, I'm not even sure what purple hash is, but uh, it sounds like it gets you really messed up. Uh, so he did that. And of course, uh, you know, from what I've heard, uh, any any type of THC product uh, makes you a little thirsty. So, uh, you know, demanding three red wines. Um, and, and plus, uh, you know, that's what Jesus drank, I believe, red wine. So, uh, you know, he was he was trying to be like Jesus, quoting Jesus. And uh, and if you don't get your way, man, I mean, what do you what do we do in this country? What's the first thing that they teach you in school? If you don't get your way, flash gang signs. So, I mean, this guy is a true American, a true patriot, and uh, sounds to me like a a very good uh, Christian overall. So, um, Sharon Lamar Rogers for being high to fly, praising Jesus, demanding three red wines, and flashing your gang signs. Congratulations, bro. You are this week's fam.com champion of the week. And now it's time for the fam.com podcast asshole of the week. Uh, this is not just reserved for uh, green parrots like last week or uh, adults as it is most of the time. Um, this week's recipient is a teenager. He His Twitter handle is Versace Pockets. And his reason for infamy is that he posted a video online of himself fucking a hot pocket dude not cool all right i mean hot pockets for eating not for sticking your dick in them um by the way this story is also on the upi if you want to check it out uh quote i tried doing it without a condom and it was just like way too hot i put it in the fridge for a little bit and i was like dude i'm gonna have to use a condom if i'm going to actually stick my dick in the whole hot pocket um yeah, dude, uh, n- not cool. Uh, for his actions, he was kicked off of Twitter, kicked off of Vine, and blocked by at Hot Pockets. Hot Pockets. Um, yeah, man. I mean, uh, Hot Pockets was in the news a couple weeks ago. They had to recall some of their uh, steak Hot Pockets for uh, some suspicious uh, meat. Um, and it sounds like Versace Pockets himself, this dude has some suspicious meat to uh, judging by where he's been sticking it recently. Um, so Hot Pockets has had enough trouble, you know, dealing with their suspicious meat. Uh, you know, plus, you know, a couple years ago, Jim Gaffigan went on a on a great rant uh, about Hot Pockets, uh, which probably didn't help their sales any. So Hot Pockets are delicious, man. Um, you don't even have to put them in the oven in, anymore. You know, they've got that little uh, aluminum sleeve or whatever that contraption is. You put them in that, throw them in the nuker for, you know, about two minutes. They come out and it's a pocket and it's got some meat and cheese and it's hot. It's a hot pocket. So uh, there's nothing wrong with hot pockets. Uh, the Bruce Harris uh, has eaten a hot pocket from time to time. Uh, I like the pepperoni ones personally. Um, so nothing wrong with a hot pocket. Don't be trying to fuck a hot pocket Versace pockets. All right. Uh, find something else to do with your time, bro. Uh, log on fam.com and read some of the threads on the message board forums. Uh, they'll give you some great ideas of how to spend your free time. Uh, we'll, we'll show you the uh, right way to do things Versace pockets. Um, but yeah, man, uh, not cool, not cool. Sticking your dick in a hot pocket, bro. Uh, for your actions, you have been Determined as this week's fam.com asshole of the week.
All right, so every week on the fam.com podcast, we have a new music feature. Uh, this week's act is a one man band. Uh, it's called Radial Core out of Omaha, Nebraska. So on the fam.com hotline right now, we've got the man behind Radial Core, John Kaufman. John, how are you? Pretty good, man. How are you doing? I am doing excellent, my man. Thanks for giving us some of your time today. Uh, I was talking about your music a little earlier in the show, and I definitely dubbed it industrial in nature. Uh, Nine Inch Nails influences, among others. Uh, so tell the listeners, how did you first get into industrial style music? Well, um, I would say originally it started uh, maybe about 10 or so years ago. A friend of mine was at my house, and... Um, he had ended up uh, borrowing a, a CD for my brother, and he came back over to my house and was like, hey, man, I, I found this CD. You should listen to it. Um, it's, it's from this band Nine Inch Nails, and I think I've heard of them before. It was uh, The Fragile. And, you know, I'd never really heard of it or anything, and I didn't really have much of a, a music uh, taste at the time. I just kind of listened to you know, whatever was on the radio, I suppose. Um, and I put it in the CD player and started listening to it, and it wasn't really like anything I'd ever heard of before. And after that, it was like I just I just kind of got hooked on it and started to seek out, you know, all the albums and listen to it and, uh, and eventually started to kind of look at, you know, different bands like ministry or skinny puppy things like that out of that um genre i suppose uh, and uh it's just kind of where i've come from and I, I you know listening to a lot of different types of music that's really um the style that i always kind of end up back find myself listening to on a daily basis Right on, man. Uh, two bands you just mentioned, Skinny Puppy and Ministry. I'm big fans of the work of both of those acts. And, you know, of course, Nine Inch Nails. Uh, so a twofold question for you. How old were you when you first heard Nine Inch Nails? Uh, and secondly, what's your favorite album? Um, at the time, I would say I was maybe um, probably 15 or so, 15, 16. So I was in high school and just kind of... Uh, Helped, helped me through, you know, that time. It was like I wasn't, you know, the coolest guy or anything in, in school, so that kind of just um, gave me something to relate to and listen to rather than what was, a, you know, on radio or whatever everybody else was listening to. Um, and as far as the favorite album, um, I uh, I think I, I really like Year Zero. I really like the way that that album is set up. Um, lately though I I really have been listening to the new album Hesitation Marks a lot and a lot of people um, are kind of conflicted from some of the stuff I've read online some people if they haven't listened to it a lot at, at first it's kind of a, a different sound um, but I I really enjoy it and uh, I mean I guess part of that may be just because it's the most you know recent thing and like for me it's like I've been listening to the music basically nonstop for the past 10 or so years at least. So it's like once something new comes out, I, I can't really take it off of the playlist. But uh, I'd say right now, you know, between year zero and hesitation marks, those are probably my, my two right now. Right on, man. I'm pretty sure I'm a little bit older than you are, so I go all the way back to Pretty Hate Machine when that first came out. Um, I was a big metalhead uh, into bands like uh, Iron Maiden, and uh, uh, one of my best friends actually hated metal. He, he could not be in the same room if I was listening to it. Uh, he was into all this uh, you know, college radio kind of stuff. He came across uh, the Pretty Hate Machine. Uh, I still remember it was actually on cassette. That's how long ago it was. He uh, sat down. He's like, Bruce, check this out. You might like it. It's kind of heavy. So he turns it on, and all of a sudden, it's just like machine noise. 